Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host Mark Rohn, and Shah, statewide news service at jbiztechvalley.com. Well, Rabbi, we have a very interesting guest here with us. He's uh, been in Albany most of his life, uh, Moshe Losek. He owns uh, a Modern Carpet in downtown Albany. And he's also uh, going to tell us about stories about uh, old-time Albany and the south end of Albany and the Jewish community, Orthodox Jewish community, that was uh, maybe 100 years ago or less, but uh, close to closing in on 100 years ago. So I just wanted to welcome you. He's not you 100 Jewish years old. No, he's not. Not yet, but I'm, I'm pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome uh, to the Jewish Year. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mark, and thank you very much, Rabbi Simon, for inviting me. Uh, to share some of my memories. Um, I'll try to remember as best I can because I, 40 ago. years ago I, un I remembered it better. <laughs> uh, I hope what I have to say is of some interest uh, to you and to the, the audience. community sure at large. Is. Everybody loves Jewish history. That's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, so my history in Albany starts in uh, December, late December 1938. Uh, my family, my father and mother and myself emigrated from Poland, a town called Lushitsa in the southeast of, of Warsaw. And it was a small town. And I was five and a half years old when we got here. Uh, that was like 77 years ago. Um, we came to Albany because my mother had four brothers and their families that lived in Albany. At that time, it was the Gwertzman brothers, I yeah, think. But did you have, I mean, obviously 1938 is, people know the basic history is right before, about a year, literally, but not even less than that, before a World War II started. Did you have any semblance of that, or that really wasn't no, part of the... No, we didn't. My, uh, my dad and my mother um, put in for papers to emigrate to the United States in 1933. Mm, it took five it years. It happened to be... Uh, when my mother was expecting me, and I was the first child. Uh, however, it wasn't so easy to get into the United States. There were quotas. And um, I consider, and my parents considered, that we got in here by the skin of our teeth, because actually the boat that we came on only made two more trips to the United States, and it was torpedoed after that. That was the first boat that was torpedoed by the Germans and went down in the Atlantic. Um, mm. So we got in here, we consider that we got here by the skin of our teeth. It was on the fifth, on a Friday, the fifth day of Hanukkah that we got here. But let me back off. Um, we had a hard time getting into the United States because my mother's brothers were always inviting us to come to the United States. It'd be more comfortable because Poland it was a small town. The town didn't have any running water, did not have any electricity, but my father would never consider moving to the United States because, um, uh, you know, in the Talmud they say, Chein HaMokam Al Yeshveo. Everyone has a very close emotional feeling to their hometown. Mm -hmm. And uh, my father thought that this small town of Lushitz um, had the greatest scholars when it comes to Talmudic learning and the greatest chazon when it came to cantor, to cantors, and the greatest poets, it had the greatest of everything. And why would he, it's not only in Poland, but in the universe. And he would never move anywhere, except that in 1933, there were many um, rules and regulations that the Polish government passed that were directly impacted on the Jewish community. Uh, it was the time of the depression, times were bad, and Jews did not own land as a whole. Uh, they were pritzim. These were the landowners, the wealthy. But they never had money, so the Jews used to work hard, saved money, borrowed money, and loaned it to them. Uh, they paid a high interest, and the farmer paid a higher interest. Uh, but it was all put in suspend, sus suspended for three months, and six months, and three years. And my father, who was basically ruined, he and uh, my grandfather and six brothers were ruined simply because of the laws that were directed actually at the you Jews. You mean fi financially ruined? Financially. Financially mm -hmm. ruined on it there. And this was so he said if any, 
government could do this to its citizens, I don't want to be any part of it, and I'm willing to go to the States. So that was the 1933? That was when? in 1933. Okay. But it was 1938, and the papers still had not come through. And coincidentally, my uh, mother's brother, my uncle Irving, Irving Gortzman, whose daughter still lives in Albany, it's uh, Adrian Rockwood, Bill Rockwood's uh, wife. Right. She's my first cousin. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, he was on his way down to New York on the train. And coincidentally, the senator from New York State was on that train, and he recognized him, and he approached him, and he spoke to him. Uh, and he said, listen, now we've been trying to get my sister and her family over already for five years, and there's been no motion in Washington to get any of the papers. So he took the names and uh, all the information, and like three days later, yeah. <laughs> Make the papers came through. A couple of phone calls and that's it. And this is the U.S. This is you can explain uh, another time what hashgacha protis means, uh, but it divine was divine providence. Uh, uh, divine uh, providence uh, that we got over just in time because after the war, okay. of which there were like 4,500 Jews that lived in the town and the surrounding areas, there were only 17 that survived the war. Mm. Wow. So uh, there was no reason to believe that if he had been there, that the same thing wouldn't have happened to us as to everyone else. So did you, uh, so this was a United States senator going yes. to Washington? Yes, okay, not a state the senator, sen not a, from, yes, yeah, okay. senator from New York State. And I don't remember, I don't know who was I the don't US senator, the but I'm gonna look it either. up before. But you can look uh, it up. But, and uh, then I wanted to ask you, this was the town of Losik? Losica. Losica, yeah. which is, you, uh, the, our name also. Your name also. Yes. Did you own the town? Or? Uh, no, <laughs> but I suppose if things would have been normal and I would have gone back there to visit, I probably could have been elected mayor uh. <laughs> because I probably had something like 200 relatives yeah. <laughs> in the town. Um, it's only like 400 or 500 years ago that people took on a family name, the last name. Uh huh. Uh, where otherwise people would be called um, Leza Moshe Noyachs. Um, they did not father. Have, they the did not have a last name. name yeah. So obviously my family was there already 500 years ago because when they said they had to take on a name, they took the name of the town. The town yeah. And they were there at the beginning to... Uh, you know that you were there? I mean, you have the genealogy to go back and not your father the, told I don't have all the way years. back, but um, I can go back to my great-grandfather easily, mm -hmm. that's for sure. He was and, born in 1832. Uh, mm -hmm. And did you go... Uh, and so the pronunciation of your last name changed when you came here. Yeah, the, but, but, I but didn't, your name I didn't, didn't change decide. That's, that's what they of, called it. That's the way they pronounced it, so that's the way it remained. And the name... And your... Uh, so the so the name that's in the in town Polish. was your yes. is your yeah. name and it wasn't changed. That's no. the way it was. No. That's good. That's right. Correct. Not it there. So we came uh, to the states and we went immediately uh, to thirty seven Marshall Street. My uncle Saul Gortzman and Irving Gortzman lived in a two family house there. We stayed with them for a while, and I do recollect that uh, that Friday night, Zalman Levin Oliver Shalom. Zalman He's an elder, uh, just over. for the people, our viewers, just to know yeah. who he is. An elder Hasid, um in the Albany area passed away a number of years ago. But he was like maybe the senior member, we could say, of the... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, Zalman, Zalman Levine? Yeah, Zalman Levine. Zalman Levine. Levine. He was a great Talmudic scholar. And he was a very close friend to my Uncle Sal. Uh, and so he came over. I remember him. And also Hasan Rabinov from... Beth Jacob, mm -hmm. also, who lived a few blocks away, he came over also to visit that night, I recall. And, um, so that was back in 1938. Again, just for our viewers, he just said, uh, Mr. Lowe says Congregation Beth Jacob, and people would know, hey, wait a minute, it's Congregation Beth Abraham Jacob well, today. Correct. So uh, maybe just The uh, Jewish community was um, centered to a large extent in downtown Albany, the around South End. Pearl Street. On per, around Pearl Street. Uh, when we came and after we were, our first place we lived on was on Catherine Street. Uh -huh. And then we moved to Trinity Place. Oh. And then we moved to Morton Avenue. 
Morton Avenue to us when we moved there was uptown. <laughs> right. We lived in the Eagle Apartments, and you right. had to wait in line to get into those apartments. Did you know a woman named Hattie Shire? No. No. Well, no. they lived on Morton in the Eagle Apartments, so I just thought, and no. her son no. Ira is in Florida, and he comes up and he goes on Morton Avenue and reminisces about, you know, the way it used to look, you know, he, when he, when he, I take him around yeah. when we hang out. But the other thing was Marshall Street. When you first came to Marshall Street, that's off of Delaware Avenue. That's off Delaware Avenue. Right. With the okay. firehouse is on the corner. Yeah, so and I just want to uh, give it proximity the shul, to what we're talking about. The shul that they davened in uh, was, the, was the predecessor to Temple Israel. Uh, it was called Congregation Israel, I, I think. Uh -huh. And um, Was that fe the Federal Street Shul? Uh, Federal Street, So yes. it's the Federal Street the Shul. The Federal Street Shul. Which and I hate I, to tell you is now an OBGYN <laughs> practice. And I, I recall in the world. I recall in the All firehouse right. there was yeah. a bench that was built on the side of the uh, firehouse, and my cousin, his name was Eliezer Moshe. Actually, my name is Eliezer Moshe also. Uh, we changed it because when they called Laser Moshe, there would be Laser Moshe running from all parts <laughs> yeah. of the house. So he was two years older than I, so he remained Laser Moshe, and I became Moshe. But I remember when we came back from Shul, he stood up on that bench and made Kiddush <laughs> for Shabbos Friday night In the for the firemen. Oh. <laughs> and there. Uh, it's just a scene. Yeah, because the, the firemen were all Irish at the time. So, <laughs> yeah, but they, they, he would he would get up there every Friday night to make kiddush for them. That's all good. It's all good. Uh, yeah. So he was only a seven years old or eight years so old. So after Marshall Street, then you moved to Catherine. To Catherine Street. Trinity, and then Catherine Street, yeah. and then down to right. Trinity. And um, is that because Trinity you was to be... one block above South Pearl Street? And there were three Orthodox shuls down there. Yeah, at the, the time. shuls were all downtown Albany. Well, uh, they did have on Washington Avenue the uh, what was uh, eventually of Shalom. Right. Uh, when they moved, but there on Washington Avenue uh, is where they had the shul. And the first uh, Albany. But downtown mm -hmm. was really the center. Right. You had Sons of Abraham. That's and LJ, across though. the street diagonally. You had uh, the Agudu Sachem. Right. And uh, right. down the block on Herkimer Street, Herkimer you Street. had uh, Beth Jacob. Bethel Jacob. Bethel, Bethel Jacob. Right. Because it's still yeah. written on the, <laughs> etched yeah. into the front. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, the first years, I used to go to school diagonally across the street. Uh, they had a public school, uh -huh. and that's weren't any day schools when you're talking 1940s. There was no, there, were, there was a Talmud Torah. Uh -huh. uh, although you might know that in Albany they did have a uh, day, a Talmud Torah, which was attended by approximately 600 children at the turn of the last century. Mm -hmm. At the turn of the last century, the Hebrew Institute. It was adjacent to uh, Sons of Abraham. Mm -hmm. It was a three-story brown building, and they were learning Talmud even. Where all of them went to, it's hard to know. Where who all went to? All so, these students that all were the good students, observant Jews. Because if, uh, you would have thought that there would be a, a dynamic remnant of Jewish, it. That, uh, yeah, uh, but there was uh, one fellow who was uh, from the Leifer family, Aaron Leifer, who went to yeshiva and he became a rabbi. And um, Mayor Kagan attended uh, people that school. People know that for the Kagan yeah. uh, butcher shop there right yeah. on Madison, people may. But he had a him. shop on, uh, Pearl, on Pearl Street with his father. Oh, yeah, they, 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 they lived on Franklin Street, yeah. and uh, behind, one block above them was South Pearl Street, and that's where the butcher shop was. Right. And at there. So they, no one had a car there. They just walked around the corner. And, and there were three butchers on Pearl Street. There were three Street. butchers. Yeah. Yes, there and, there was, uh, and, and there were uh, Golds and uh, Golden Zots, and there was uh, Mayor Kagan, right. uh, or uh, Ben C. Kagan. Ben C. Kagan, right. Ben C. Kagan, and... Um, Hagelow? Uh, which one? Hagelow? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was there, and there were several bakeries, the Capital Bakery and Zuckerman's Bakery. Um, there was a fish store, Heinz fish store, which I hated to go in because I somehow or other f uh, fresh fish was nauseating to me, and I would be going down there once a week. I, I, I would be going down the alley, the people will know there's an alley from Trinity Place right. down to uh, South Pearl Street. I would go down that alley every day 
either to get rolls, bread, or to the or to to the Kagans to get. Uh, I I was. I was there every day, yeah. and that's where I lived. I went on South Pearl Street to go to school. Uh, even I remember the name of the policeman, Jack, the policeman who crossed us at the corner there. Um, so everybody would remember him who lived in the neighborhood. How did you become so fluent in Hebrew and Yiddish, and you know how how was that? How did well, that come about? English was my second language. Yeah, <laughs> because when we were in Poland, the only thing that you spoke was Yiddish and you spoke Polish when you were dealing with the, the, the Poles. Polish people or were you going out to do business with them. But the town was a Jewish town. Uh, you would learn Polish later on, you would pick it up. But first, you would only speak Yiddish. So um, I have an interesting story if you want to hear yeah, that. Yeah, we do, sure. We'll run out of time. No, but, we won't. No, it's good. We're good. We're good. Uh, when we were on Marshall Street, <coughs> I went outside. And in the street, the kids from the street were playing stickball. In those days, nobody had bats. They actually had a broomstick right. and a ball around. And they had teams. And they would, mm -hmm. Well, when, we, when I was in Poland, I was kind of large for my age, a little bit larger, and so was my cousin. So our gang, mm -hmm. our chevre, Mm -hmm. If we played all together, we sort of told them where to go, where we're going, when we're coming, what we're doing. So I was accustomed to saying something, and people would pay attention to it. So I was watching them, and I thought this was very interesting. On it. So I'm standing on the corner, on the, on the curb, and as they're playing there, I call out to them, Vaf me of the Pilka, which is in Jewish. Right. And it says, throw me the ball. So everybody turns and looks at me for a second, turns away. None of these were Jewish kids. <laughs> Nobody spoke Yiddish. So I was a little bit disappointed, but I, I called out again, Vaf mil de pilka, throw me the ball. And uh, they ignored me. Now I was a little bit upset, but I decided I was going to be very generous. I'm going to give them one more chance. Mm -hmm. And I call out once more, Vaf me the pilka. And no one paid any attention to me. So when the guy hit the kid hit the ball, I ran into the street and grabbed it. Little did I realize that I just ruined the game for them. And uh, I had a dozen kids jumping on top of me. Mm -hmm. And I ended up with a bloody nose, a bloody lip. And I ran into the house crying. And they were all older than me. And crying to my mother, I said, Mamalu, Mamalu, can I say anything I want to in Yiddish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mamalu, Mamalu, Villa Heim Gain, Kempoilen, Villa Zain, and Fakakta, America. I don't want to be in this terrible place over there. They're beating me up. Well, later on, I sat down when I caught my breath. And I said to myself, you know, I'm missing something here. <laughs> And I quickly learned English. <laughs> I quickly yeah, you learned got how your to speak. lesson. You learned your lesson well. <laughs> but you're so fluent in Hebrew, and you said that you didn't have. No, I didn't speak whole... fluent in Hebrew. No, no, but in Yiddish. you are now. Well, I'm not fluent. <laughs> but you're. I mean, you're more fluent than other than most other people. That okay. I, okay. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. you know, it's it's really. You know, great to see. You know, how, but how did that evolve when you said you weren't didn't have a Talmud Torah class, or you did? Well, I attended so, a Talmud Torah class, uh, but the but, Talmud Torah class I automatically went into the Bar Mitzvah class, even right. though I was only six, uh, because I knew how to daven. I already started going to a cheder at the age of three in Poland, so whatever they were teaching, I was in the Bar Mitzvah class. <laughs> All the years. Uh huh. Uh, so for seven years you were in bar mitzvah. Yeah, class. I, I recall. Uh, <laughs> I, I was uh, her mongerman was in my class with me, and, and uh, uh, so yeah. Uh, eventually, when I came back from New York, because I did go to yeshiva from. Oh, you did. That's what I'm asking. Okay, yeah, I yeah. went to I went to yeshiva in 1945. Uh huh. Where is that? In Brooklyn, New York, yeshiva Tarver Das. Uh huh. So I was there for 11 years, oh, okay. and I came back home, and I went into the store with my dad full-time. However... And the um, store I, being Modern Carpet? 
Or it was what? modern furniture. Modern company. furniture. Yeah. Okay. We had furniture and carpeting at that time. Okay. Um, and and um, that was on, still on Broadway where it is now? or Where was uh, no, it? No, originally, originally my dad, it was at uh, 245 South Pearl Street. I see. Okay. And then he moved to 800, uh, to, uh, 745 Broadway, and then to 800 Broadway, and now we're at Ten uh, the new location yeah. at 1050 Broadway. Yeah. So um, I felt responsible to contribute somewhat, and they were looking for Hebrew teachers, so I did go to teach for probably three years in the afternoon. Uh, I rushed out of the store to teach in the, in the Talmud Torah wow. at the Hebrew, the Hebrew uh, Institute. Institute. Yeah. That's where I would, uh, I was uh, Paula's teacher. Oh, okay. Oh, you were. Okay. <laughs> yes. I remember she was a very cute yes, girl, a little girl. She still is. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what made you maybe motivate you to come back to Albany? Like you were saying yourself, most, again, who knows, you know, I don't know statistics, how many people remained observant, or obviously they, if they remained observant, they didn't stay in Albany because it's such a small community you, today. If you want to analyze it, there were kids that lived in New York or even in the Bronx, and they would stay in the dormitory. But they were New Yorkers, so obviously they basically stayed in New York. There were children that came from the West Coast. When they came to New York, uh, they were disassociated from their hometown already, and they became New Yorkers. When you're in Albany, you're not really that far from New York. They didn't know how to treat me because in the dormitory, they basically became your um, secondary parents. But they never became, the Rebbe's never became secondary parents to me because they said, he's got so much family in New York, but his family is in Albany. It's, he can go back and forth. And I never lost contact with the city. Also, my dad was in business and he worked very, very hard. Uh, at that time, I never went to summer camp. Mm -hmm. I would. Anytime we had time off, I would be home and I would be helping out in the store, do whatever I could do. Um, and that would keep me busy. And, uh, and out of trouble. Well, <laughs> it's true, I never did have time to get into any trouble. <laughs> Maybe that's why I was a good kid, because I go. never had an opportunity <laughs> to be bad. <laughs> So I think maybe that's a good thing. Uh, I never had a challenge, so. Um, I grew up in Albany all the summers, and uh, I had a great deal of family here at that time, less so now, because as time marches on. Uh, you know. But um, um, I got married in 1959. And, 1959? Uh, okay. In 1959. And where did you meet the missus? I met Rivka in April 1st. I spoke to her the first time. Um, I called up, and um, her mother answered. And at that time, she was working already and uh, going to Brooklyn College at night. She said she won't be home till about 11 o'clock. She said, is it OK to call up at 11 o'clock? So yeah, sure. So I, five minutes after 11 or so, I called up. And sure enough, Lyft answered the phone. And I introduced myself, and she assumed that this was <laughs> an April Fool's Day. Right, Joe. <laughs> really? <laughs> Joe. Well, it took a while before I convinced her. Uh, You're for real. Yeah. Now, was uh, this an arranged thing, or what? How did you meet well, her? So. There were a number of people that I knew that knew her father, and um, they thought it would be a good shidduch. And they gave me the name to call up. And I got numerous times. I had a drawer where I put these names in. Uh, her na maiden name was Rivka Rimwalt, but her name was Rivka. Most people called her Reggie, mm -hmm. and uh, they called her also Regina, which is English, and was Rimwalt. So I had gotten about four or five people already that asked me to call up to, to take her out and make a date because it might be good. However, at that time, that's, there, that summer, I was and an apartment, there's six of us that had an apartment because I was in the class that was learning Hilfe uh, Schrita and we were going to the Schlachthäuser. The learning about ritual slaughtering, ritual just for slaughtering. our audience. Yeah. Uh, and um, 
we were there together, and there was one fellow, uh, Usher Leitman. He was from Brazil. He just passed away several months ago. Um, and he had a date with Rivka, as it turns out. A date meant he went to the house. This was the first time, and um, the parents were there. She said hello, and then he and Rivka would sit down and talk for an hour, and he came back. So he came back. It was summertime, so it was late. It was Mitzvah Shabbos. He came back about midnight. And when he walked into the door, I said, uh, No, Wisher, sure. how was the date? He said, She's a wonderful girl, a very good looking girl. She's intelligent, she's beautiful, and she's perfect for you. <laughs> so he said, Okay, yeah, let me give you her name. He gave me her name, and then she says, You know, it's beginning to sound familiar. So I went to the drawer, and they dumped out all the setlach, all the little yeah. lists that I had there. And sure enough, I ran across Rivka, Regina, uh -huh. Remold, and they all matched up with the phone number. And so I said, I think I'll call her up. There's enough people that met her, and, or that knew her, and knew her parents. And I went there, and of course, it was magic. Uh, it was perfect from the first mm -hmm. moment. Love at first sight. From the first. <laughs> it, and you got it's married? It's more, more, than love, more than love, because love really comes later. True love. Mm -hmm. So uh, this was how many, how long between the first time you met her on April 1st to the... December. Six, April 1st, that we called her up, and, and then we were December, married, you were December married. 16th. I, I just want to say, so I know Mrs. R uh, Losek Rivka passed away, you know, a year or two ago, a few years ago, and I did, of course, had the opportunity to talk to her and a privilege to talk to her. And just want to put in one more thing from her that, I mean, there's really more stories, but she was very close to the Lubavitcher Rebbe's uh, mother, lived right there, and there were stories there. I don't know, we're running out of time. I want you to do the talk. Well, about it. it's not Albany, but I can tell you uh, the one story that all the Chabadniks and all the Lubavitch uh, uh, feel, makes them feel good. Um, the Rebbe, all of our Shalom, used to come every day to visit his mother. And um, Rivka had a sister, but there were no boys in the family. And she was the older one, so she would be taking down the garbage, bags of garbage, to put into the garbage pails on it there. This is 1414 President. Right. President so, Street in uh, Kingston. And, and they lived in 1418 also. In, right. yeah. in, in Crown if you're, Heights, Brooklyn. If you know, if you're familiar with the doors uh, that they have in the apartment houses, they're heavy steel doors with heavy glass on it. And um, she'd be struggling to get the door open and get out. Now, very often, the young fellows from the yeshiva would be going up also to see if they could be helpful. And um, they were embarrassed, and they were probably correct. When a young lady was walking down, they would let this door slam in her face and get away. Uh, one day, the Rebbe was coming up the walk towards the uh, doors, and he noticed that Rivka was coming in on the other side to, uh, with the bags of garbage. And the Rebbe literally ran up to the doors, and he opened it up and held the door open for her to, for her to be able to go out with the bags of garbage. Um, he was a gentleman. Rivka, of course, felt like if there had been a hole, she would have sunk in. The idea of the Rebbe holding the door open for her was something, uh, something she would have never expected, and it was embarrassing. But nevertheless, it shows that you can be a scholar, you right. can be a leader, you can be an extraordinary leader among Jewish people, but it's important to be a gentleman also. And yeah, chivalry's not dead yet, no. But I wanted to, quickly, in the 30 seconds we have, just wanted to, moving forward, how many children do you have? I have two children. Okay. And we were blessed with seven grandchildren. Okay. And I am also blessed at this time with two great-grandchildren. Wonderful. And where uh, your two children live in? Well, uh, my son, as of several weeks ago, lives full-time in Jerusalem, Yerushalayim. Avi? Um, the family made yeah. Aliyah some years back, okay. uh, but he was working for Standard & Poor's, right. and for the last uh, more than five years he was working for the SEC. Right. So he did not make Aliyah officially right. until he resigned his position with the SEC, okay. and now he is full-time in Yerushalayim. And, and your other child? 
She's a, that's my daughter Adina. She's in Muncie. Her husband is Simcha Herbstman and is an Askin. He, they're very heavily involved in the Jewish community in many institutions, and uh, they in, do in Rockland County. In Rockland yeah. County, in Muncie, thereby, it's, and uh, he works for in the New York Securities. Okay, and um, he has a full-time job. How he has enough time. And she had, would have enough time to do all the things that they do. I don't understand, but they do it. It's energy. Thank, yes. thank you, Mr. Yes. Morris Lossick. This is really, we can say you're the pillar of the Jewish community yes, in, in Albany. Yes. We can say that. And we wish you uh, much more compliment. success uh, and then with good health, with many long years of working thank for you. the Jewish community. <laughs> I don't think we got very far into Albany. No, but we did. But but perhaps thank you another very time. much and no. you know, much success. Come back again. Yeah, it was very nice talking to you. Thank you for having me invited me.